Okay, so I'm going to go over some of the laws of exponents that we learned in class, just as a review. If you're not in my class, this will just be a review for anybody that needs it. So, law number one, I'm just naming it law number one, doesn't matter what order they're in. That is when you take a base of x and multiply it times another base that's the same, so both of these are the same, and they have exponents. So we've all seen x times x is x squared, but what if we had an added some exponents, like 4 and 3, let's say. Well, what we do, the law says, keep the same base and add exponents. So that would equal x to the seventh. All right? So the reason why that is, just to show you, is x to the fourth would be x times x times x times x. That's x to the fourth. x to the fourth is being multiplied times x to the third. But x to the third is x times x times x. So x times x times x times x times x times x times x is x to the seventh. And that is why the law works. When you multiply the same base, add the exponents. In the next example, I'll show you what happens when you throw some numbers in there as well. Okay, so this is an explanation of the first law we learned, except a little bit more of a more difficult example. So here, you'll see something like this, and it'll be 2x to the 5th, 4x to the 9th. And what that real, the way that you should really read that is 2 times x to the 5th, times 4, times x to the 9th. So all these things are being multiplied. Multiplication here and here and here. I could also switch the order of these around. I could just say 2 times 4, and see how I'm writing the dot now, so that I don't just write 24. So 2 times 4 times x to the 5th times x to the ninth. Sometimes we don't put the dots in between if they're not really necessary. But I could also rearrange the order, and it's still the same thing. So this right here is equivalent to this, this right here. This right here is more useful for me visually because I can see that I'm multiplying 2 times 4. I'm going to take this away for now, and just show you what you should do. Applying our laws of exponents. The numbers, 2 and 4, are not the same base. We're just going to multiply them since we know what those are. So 2 times 4 is 8. And then we look at for all the same bases. Here we just have x's. If there were y's, we'd look at them next. But look at the x's. They're going to be multiplied together, so we're going to have an x as our base. And our exponent for this base is going to be 5 plus 9. So 5 plus 9 is 14. Okay? So our final answer is 8 times x to the power of 14. I can give you another example. So here's, an here's another one. Or I'll erase it so that you can see easier. Let's say we had um, 3xy to the third power x squared um, 5y, let's say. Okay, so how do I simplify that? I'll write what it equals down here. So the, what I always do is I always look at all the numbers. So I say, all right, well, there's a 3 and there's a 5. Everything's being multiplied since it's all next to each other. There's no plus or uh, minus or there's no division going on. So I'm just going to multiply the 3 and the 5 to get the numbers done with. 3 times 5 is 15. So I got 15. And then I look at the next base. I'll go to x. So here's x and here's x. So I'm going to have an x here. Now let's figure out what the exponent should be. Here, I've got an x, and it doesn't have a written exponent. So there's no exponent that's written here. However, that, is, that means that there's an exponent of 1. It's kind of like when you write just the letter or the variable x. You never write 1x. You usually just write x. Same type of thing with an exponent of 1. So there's really a little 1 there, but we never really write it. There's just 1x there. So that means that if there's an exponent of 1, to figure out this exponent, we do 1 plus 2, which would be 3. All right? And then I move on. I've also got y's. So I'm going to have a y in my answer. And to figure out this exponent, I have to add again. So I look at all my bases that are y's. 
and add the exponent. So it's going to be 3 plus, there's no exponent here, so hopefully you're saying it should be 1, and it should be. So 3 plus 1, that's going to be 4. So my final, final answer is 15, x to the third, y to the fourth. And that's all you need for that type of complicated one. If there's negative signs in there, like with a 5 or a 3 with the actual number, then that goes here. Later on, we'll get to negative exponents altogether. That doesn't make it a whole, the whole thing negative. So think of exponents as symbols. All right, here's law number 2. And again, the number two, the law number two, doesn't really mean anything. It's just I just label them that. So for law number two, we're going to look at x's again, and we're going to work on simplifying this. So this is x to the fifth divided by x squared, or x to the fifth over x squared is another way of saying it. So the law says that this will equal, we have the base of x, and it says to subtract exponents. So we'll take 5 and we'll subtract 2. So in the last law, we were multiplying same bases. We had x to a power times x to a power. Now we're saying x to a power divided by x to a power. So we're going to subtract them. So that's going to be 5 minus 2, which equals x cubed. All right? Now, the reason that that works is, if I erase this, If I rewrite this, x to the power of 5, that is x times x times x times x times x. x squared is x times x. Now, the reason I rewrote this is because we can start canceling some of these x's out. So I'll rewrite down here so you can see. I'm just rewriting what this simplifies to. x divided by an x, these two will cancel because any number, which is a x, divided by itself is just 1. So like 5 divided by 5 is 1. So any number x divided by itself is going to be 1. Or it's just going to cancel. So this is going to cancel out with this one. And this one's going to cancel out with this one for the same reasons. And you'll be left with three x's up top. What will you be left with in the bottom? Just a 1. Because I said x over x is just 1. So it would be 1 over 1. So I can leave the denominator as 1. And I have 3 x's up top. So I don't really need this denominator of 1. And I can simplify this. This is x times x times x, which is x cubed. And that's exactly what we had before when we subtracted the exponents. So instead of doing all of that work each time, it's easier just to remember Okay, I'm dividing things that have the same base. Subtract the exponents. That's all, that's all you have to worry about. You're subtracting simply the exponents. Next, I'm going to show you an example that has numbers in it and it looks a little bit more complicated. Okay, here's your harder example. We've got 12 times x to the power of 4 times y to the power of 5 all divided by 3 times x to the power of 2 times y to the power of 4. Simplifying this, I'm going to follow the same process that I did before when I had the complicated example. I'm going to work with the numbers first. The numbers are 12 and 3. So, 12 divided by 3. I'm going to first write my fraction bar. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So if 12 divided by 3 is 4, how should I write this in the fraction bar? I don't want to put something over 4, because that would indicate 1 fourth. So I want to put the 4 up top. That's where that's going to go. At that point, I've taken care of the 12 and the 3. So that is the simplified version of 12 divided by 3 is just the 4. I'll worry about what goes in the bottom and up top now. Um, the x to the 4th, y to the 5th, x squared, and y to the 4th. Let's find all the bases that are the same. We've got an x and a y, and an x, and a y. So the x is here, same base, so let's work with them. We've got an x, throw the x up top to start off, okay? It's going to go up top to, just to start. And now to figure out the exponent that this x has, we follow the law that I just showed you. So 4 minus 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. So we're done with the x's. That is the simplified part. So all this part's done. Now we just need to work 
with the y. So now we have y. And the same law applies. Here's the y's. Subtract the exponents. 5 minus 4 is 1. Do I really need to write a 1 there? No, I don't need to. Now you might be saying, well, what goes in the bottom? Well, this is just going to be 1 down here. So the best way to write this is simplified would be like this. 4x squared y. Or 4 times x squared times y. And that's it. Okay, next law. Law number 3. For no apparent reason, it's called law number 3. We're going to simplify this. This is a power to a power. That's what I'm calling it. The reason I'm calling it that is because I'm taking x, which is my base, raising it to a power, and then raising that whole thing to the, another power. So that's x squared to the power of 3. What the law says is that we multiply exponents here. So the law says we take our same base and we multiply 2 times 3. And 2 times 3 is 6. That's what we get. The reason we do that is for the reason I'll show you here. x squared. So I'm going to rewrite x squared. I'm rewriting this here. x squared is x times x. Good so far. x times x cubed means you take everything inside the parentheses and you cube it. That means you take everything inside the parentheses and multiply it times itself three times. So that would equal, so that equals this. This equals x times x times x times x times x times x. At this point, my parentheses aren't worth anything. I don't need all the parentheses. So I could just write x times x times x times x times x times x. I don't need the parentheses. And I'm multiplying x six times. So that equals x to the sixth. Again, you don't need to do all of this every time. You just need to remember the law, which says multiply each exponent underneath the parentheses when you raise it to another power. So next I'll show you a more complicated example, but this is the basic law. OK, here's the more complicated example. We've got 2 times x cubed times y to the fifth, all to the power of 3. All right? So the way we're going to do this is break it down again. So again, I've been starting with numbers, so I'll stick with that. I'm going to start with the 2. Now, the law said that we take each exponent and multiply it times the other exponent. So you might be saying, OK, well, what's the exponent of 2? So I'll write it out. So what's the exponent of 2? Well, it would just be 1. We don't have an exponent that we write, just like when we write x. The exponent's 1, we just don't write it. Here, we don't write the exponent of 1. So if, even though that it's there. So we have 1, and the law says take the 1 and multiply it times 3. So that would be 1 times 3. Okay? So that would equal 2 cubed. In other words, we simply need to, when we work with the number, we don't really need to worry about too many laws. We just need to cube 2. So cubing 2 means taking 2, multiplying times 2 three times. So 2 times 2 times 2, that'll give you the 8. Most people forget to do something with the actual number. You're going to cube it. Don't take 2 and multiply times 3. You're going to cube it. Very different. Okay, so now that we're done with a number, we're going to work with the other variable. So here's our base of x. The law says multiply exponents together. So we take 8 times x. Our exponent here will be 3 times 3, which is 9. So don't add exponents here. We're multiplying them. Because this is 3 x's 3 times. So 3 groups of 3, which is 9. Okay. Then the last one is y. That's going to be 5 times 3 to the 15th power. If you didn't catch all of that, Rewind back and rewatch how I got the, from 2 to 8. It was 2 cubed. And then you just work with the same base and take it to the next power. All right? All right, law number 4. We're moving right along. Let's say we've got something like x to the negative second power. A few laws ago, many laws ago, I had x to... Or how did I explain that? I said that exponents 
were, you should look at them as symbols, not as numbers. And this is where, what I mean by that. Don't think of this as like a negative value. Think of the negative two up here as a symbol. And the reason I want you to do that is because it doesn't make it negative. What this makes it is one over x squared. So it's on the wrong side. It's on the wrong side of the road. If it's a negative exponent, it's on the wrong side of the fraction side. Fraction sign. So if it's a negative, flip it is one way of looking at it. If I had, if I gave you 1 over x to the negative second power, same thing applies. That means it's on the wrong side. So if it's on the bottom side, the denominator, I would make it put it in the numerator. Now it becomes x squared. The only other detail I would tell you is once, if it's negative here and you flip it, it becomes positive. So the second you flip it, it's no longer a negative exponent. The value of the actual expression is not changing its sign. And I'll show you a little bit what that means, what that looks like in the next, next example. All right, here's a more complicated example of the law I was just showing you. And it's kind of a more complicated example. It's kind of combining some of the other laws we use. So here's a a mess that we have to sort out, all right? I'm gonna start with the numbers yet again. So I've got a negative five and a 25 down here. So negative five divided by 25. Let's figure out what this fraction is gonna look like. So that's gonna equal some fraction. Five divided by 25. Well, let's see, five times five is 25. And we can worry about the negative sign later. So that means that that's gonna be one fifth. And if you don't know, check it in your calculator. So it's one-fifth, but there's this negative sign there. So we're still going to keep it negative. And I'm going to write the one, although that's going to go away later. And then I'm going to have the five down here. There's my, neg there's my negative one-fifth. So my negative five over 25, those combine. All right? Then I'm going to work with my next base. So I told you before, always put the x up top. This next part is what will be... Interesting. So the law says subtract the exponent. So 2 minus 5. 2 minus 5. Some of you are saying 3. It's not 3. It's negative 3. 2 minus 2 take away 5. It's negative 3. Okay? And your alarm should be going off because we have a negative exponent. We need to get rid of that. And then we have another one. We've got y is the other base. So let's draw the right or y. And then the law says subtract exponents, so 3 minus, so there's no exponent, what do we do? Oh wait, there's a 1. Yeah. 3 minus 1, 2. All right. So from here, we're not quite simplified yet. I've got a negative exponent here. That doesn't make the whole value of this negative. What makes this whole thing negative is this negative sign. That was associated with this particular number, All right. not with the exponent. That's what I meant before, okay? So to finish this off, if there's a negative exponent, it's in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna rewrite this. This says negative one times x to the negative third power times y squared all over five. So my denominator is still gonna be five. What else is going on in my denominator? Well, this is a negative exponent. So I've gotta take just this piece just what is raised to the negative power and put it in the denominator. So that means that this is going to go here and become 5 times x cubed. Notice how it went from negative exponent to positive exponent down here. My negative sign out here, that's a negative 1. So that becomes negative. And I don't really need to write 1 because I'm going to write negative 1 times y squared. So negative 1 times y squared is just negative y squared. Right? This is a simplified version of that, using a few of those laws to combine them. If you have questions or if you think I made an error somewhere, send me a message. Thanks.